that you should know yourself is the advice of all the wise. How can you know yourself when being is not an object? How can you not know yourself, your own being, which is consciousness, self-luminous? In this spiritual instruction, the Maharshi has pointed out, are there two selves that one should know or not know the other? Who is it that would wish to know the self? Or who is it that is subject to the illusion of ignorance and its consequent bondage? And who is desirous of liberation because he intuits it's his natural state? Without knowing yourself as you really are, what can really be known? If you treat the self as if it were an object to be attained or lost, to enter into as if it were a state, or to depart from as if you would come down from that state, to treat the self as if it were an object is delusive. The self signifies yourself. And all the teachings of the sages and scriptures that speak of the self, the absolute, are speaking of you in your real nature. What are you in your real nature? Your experience so-called, your knowledge so-called, of anything else depends upon the view of yourself, the definition of yourself. This is why Sri Bhagavan says in Saddarshanam, Truth Revealed, that it is only as long as the ego is taken to exist, there is the ego sense, will there be the threefold division of the universe, the individual, and the Supreme Self, or God. The three are not really three, he says. The division, the multiplicity, appears only so long as oneself is not known. The self, which is pure being, consciousness, bliss, is ever-existent. It is non-dual, and it alone is. If that very same self is assumed to be, through the power of imagination, an individual entity or ego, then all illusion sprouts from there. Since it is illusion, it is not really existent, but it seems to be. If we want illusion to vanish and perceive reality in such a manner that reality comprehends itself, then we must know who we are. And how else to know who you are unless you question the very one that seems to be individualized even now? What is it that you refer to as I in yourself? What constitutes the self? Can it be the body? Can anything perceived through your senses be yourself? Can anything conceived in the mind be yourself? 
what is this seemingly individualized self? What marks off or defines its individuality? That is, what is it in itself? It is not so important what is appended to it by way of the form of definition, whether it be of the mind or the body or something of the world. All those come after the notion I arises. Ask yourself, for whom is the experience of all these things? Who is it that lends a reality and identity to all these things? With the appearance of the individual, bondage is possible, suffering is possible. With the rise of the individual, the ego, dualism seems to be the case. Inquire within yourself and determine what this individual is, if he is. If you so inquire, you will find undivided being. And in that absolute undivided existence, which is birthless, formless, and deathless, which has no condition or division, you will know yourself. Not yourself will know another self. But this is knowledge in which being and knowing are identical. Not as one person knowing something else. But the innate existence knowing itself with its own light. For this existence there is no beginning and no end. For this existence, there is nothing else whatsoever. No departing from itself, no returning to itself. From this undivided existence or real self comes all wisdom. Wisdom is really that knowledge which knows itself. Such knowledge is not an idea or set of ideas. How could you be an idea? Real knowledge is being. and is not lost or attained at any time. That knowledge constitutes self-realization. So self-realization is not an event in time. It is not more at one point and less at another. Ideas of gain and loss, exiting and returning, attaining and otherwise, can arise only after the notion of individuality is taken for granted. Likewise is it with every other duality and every doubt regarding the nature of the self. The one remedy for all such illusion is simply to inquire and know yourself then you find illusion to be rootless. 
Indeed, you find it to be beginningless. That is, it did not start. Who then is bound? There is no one bound. Who gets free? No one gets free. What was sought as liberation is your own nature. You do not have another nature. Nor is there anything else existing. So know yourself. 